I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today I got a question, well, yesterday. Well, do I really work? Do I really do anything? And as he pointed out, trust funds and uh, inheritance, they don't count. You need to have a job. <laughs> All right, well, I guess it's true. You guys have no idea, most of you anyway, what I actually do, where I come from, what my background is, and maybe it's time we dug into that. We've got 7,500 subscribers, or we did before yesterday's great exodus out as we covered some residency requirements here in Nicaragua. We lost quite a few viewers, but we did gain some as well, so hopefully by the time this is going up, we're still at 7,500. But with 7,500 people, it has been a long time since we dug in in any way into what uh, my background is and what I do, so let's Talk about me for a day. This is a narcissist dream episode. This is an interesting one for me because I get to talk about myself. This is, I mean, I'm always kind of talking about myself, but I get to really completely just focus on myself today like this is different. I'll try not to make this go too long, but I will try to make it at least interesting. But most importantly, I think that this actually does provide a little bit of important context for you guys and absolutely get down and ask questions like I'm pretty much an open book, I have been. And if for those who have not dug in or you want to find a lot more about me, you can look me up on Google, always use my full name. I always use my full name. So any of my writings, my vlogs, my anything, they're always going to have my full name associated with it. I am extremely public. I've been public for a quarter century. I have so much out there that it will blow your mind. If you're looking for my blog that came before this, you can find it at uh, sheepguardinglama.com. That has an unbelievable amount of content, including podcasts and other media, including some bands that I've had in the past. Uh, and okay, let's dig in. I was born in 1976 in Rochester, New York. I only spent about three months living in the area of the city itself before my family bought and moved to a small farm in Wyoming County, which is the county that borders Buffalo to the east. It's a very rural County, 55,000 head of cattle, 35,000 people across the entire county. So I grew up in a very rural area on a farm. I had no neighbors that I could see. There were no kids who lived on my street except for when I was extremely little and they were too far away because I was too far to walk to the next door house, let alone to go see anybody. Uh, by the time I was old enough to visit people, I had no neighbors whatsoever. I went to a private school, but not a big fancy one, just a little private school uh, in the neighboring county. So while I took public transportation to and from school, I went to a very small private school, K through eighth grade. In ninth grade, I transferred into public school and went to the same public school as everyone else. Uh, it's my background, so that kind of just gives you an idea. I grew up on a farm. We're not around people. Very, very isolated in upstate New York. And you can look all this up on a map and see where I'm from, and it's a beautiful area to be from. We have great food, we have terrible weather, we have high taxes and very few jobs. It is challenging in a lot of ways, but there's also a lot of culture uh, and a lot of important history has happened there. It is a really beautiful region uh, and I really got uh, a liking for travel from that region, not just because it was a great place to leave from time to time, of course that was also true, but because it was an area that really liked being international. We were connected to Canada. My local large city was Toronto, not New York City that people often assume, but I didn't start going to New York City until I was 17. Up until then, the only large city that I regularly went to was Toronto. That was always my home city in my mind. And in fact, in many ways, I feel much more connected to Toronto, at least in my younger years, than I did to Rochester or Buffalo. When I was older, I would become associated with Rochester quite a bit because I did spend some time in university there. I did live there, work there quite a bit and end up starting a company there. I have worked my entire life, uh, starting actually working on a farm when I was little, doing an internship when I was 13, and by the time I was 16, I was working normal, everyday, terrible jobs like dishwasher and you know food service in a uh, healthcare facility and all those kinds of things. Uh, when I was young, I eventually worked my way up, managed to work as a photojournalist for the newspaper, and when I went to university, I was hired in my first uh, full day of classes uh, to start teaching uh, and to head um, a certain programs uh, in programming and IT at the university because I was the only person who uh, was really doing that stuff. At the time, this is back when those programs weren't really popular, even in an engineering school like the one I went to in Michigan. Uh, so I started my career very early in my field. I've been working in my field for 35 years and I'm really passionate about it. But I've always worked. It's something that I love to do. I love the entire uh, ecosystem of working. And so I've, I've taken that very seriously from the very beginning. I thought when I went to university that I'd be heading towards a career in operations research with a background in manufacturing engineering. 
I did manufacturing engineering for a couple years and ended up really hating it, dropped out of university, stopped doing that, and went into being a professional musician, which I did for a number of years. I played guitar professionally classical guitar, built a career in doing that. So notice this is my fourth career. I've worked in software engineering and IT, but those were kind of blended together, basically software engineering. I worked in industrial engineering or manufacturing systems engineering, a subset of it. I worked as a professional musician. Uh, I did do normal work in like food service and stuff, but that was not exactly a career. And I was a photojournalist. All of this, I'm still in my teens. By the time I was 19, I was working multiple jobs. I would be a professional musician during the day and I would work in restaurants at night. I managed chains of restaurants for a couple different chains. I worked uh, for both Pizza Hut and Burger King. I was a regional, uh, not the regional manager, but I was a regional manager. So I was basically the same level as a store manager, but assigned to be an assistant to store managers across an entire region. So it was kind of a kind of an aside uh, management position of that. I was called a regional bulldog. It was really cool. I was sent into restaurants to help recover them. Basically, if you requested me to come to your restaurant, I was the guy you wanted to see because I was there to help you in any way that you needed. If I showed up to your restaurant and you hadn't requested me, it means I was your last chance and I was there to turn it around and you could work with me and hopefully save your job or you could not work with me and probably be fired. That was my job for a long time. That was really cool. I loved doing that. And just in the last several months, the chain that I worked for just got uh, sold. It huge, huge chain in the Northeast US. From there, I moved into working in hotels. So I had a restaurant career as a manager. I then went into a hotel career as a manager, all this time also uh, putting myself through additional university, which I now regret quite heavily, but I did that at the time um, as well. So I stayed very busy. I often didn't sleep. I worked multiple jobs all throughout this era. By the time I got to 21, or probably late 20, uh, my roommate at the time, Andrew West, and I decided, you know, it would be amazing to find a career that we really loved. And we both had a background in software engineering and had really loved that, but IT was the hot new thing because of the upcoming uh, Y2K problems. If you don't know what that is, it's not interesting, but that was coming up and it was causing a huge boost in the IT industry. Salaries were way up, uh, job opportunities were high, and the number of people who had the necessary skills to do it were extremely low. He had a background just in software, I did actually have some systems administration from my time at university working, not studying. I actually worked as a systems administrator while in university. And uh, because of that, we had this really good background to go into that field. So both of us were self-motivated. We had each other to peer review off of. We went to bookstores, bought tons of books, bought old computers, and self-taught ourselves into the IT industry, which we got into heavily in the mid to late 1990s, did relatively well. The first few years are always tough in a new career field, but we did uh, get a number of, of interesting opportunities, um, felt pretty good, but became very disenchanted early on. And by 1999, when I was 22 years old, we made the decision that working for other people just didn't make any sense. We hated the politics. We hated that we were stopped from doing a good job, that we would show up, we would work hard, and people didn't care whether we did a good job. People didn't care if we had good ideas. People didn't care if we were doing the right thing for the business. Someone who had no idea what we were doing, often who called themselves IT just because they were old, would be given the power to tell us not to do those things. We would do no good in the work that we did. We would not get any accolades because we'd never be allowed to show our work. We were actually often bored simply not being allowed to do a good job, not allowed to do any job at all. And so we decided that it only made sense to work for ourselves. So we started a firm with the vision of creating a place that would be the place where we would want to work. So we didn't create it with the intent of it being a big successful company. We didn't build it with the intent of having employees. We simply built a consultancy so that we could go out and be our own bosses and go find companies and work directly with owners or investors and hopefully bypass at least a large portion of the politics that go on in business and this was one of the best things we ever did because early on it allowed us to do a lot of control of our own resumes. And if we found that there was something that was lacking, we were able to go out there and create it in a way and that worked incredibly well and our careers advanced incredibly quickly. We ended up, long story short, the company ended up exploding, doing incredibly well. We got bought out. We did so well that we ended up buying the company back. All kinds of wild things happened. Owning your own company, running a new business is a wild ride. And there's a lot of things I'm skipping. I had a very busy lifetime uh, of, of events, working nonstop. I would often work overnight jobs to keep money flowing so that we could keep the consultancy going during the day and keep growing because if we lived completely off of that, we'd be going into debt and that didn't make sense. So we were trying everything we could do to 
to put food on the table while still working. We were young and able to go without sleep. Notice at no point that I have a big influx of cash. I was not doing this because I had investors or anything of the sort. I was working a night job managing hotels or playing guitar to put food on the table so that we could keep running a business that wasn't profitable enough to pay us to survive yet. We ended up getting some really important contracts, and by late 1999, we were uh, accredited with being the very first accredited with being the very first to introduce cloud computing for medical systems. We built uh, actual cloud-based software systems that are still in use today, 25, 25 years later, in the human research, um, medical research field. We're very proud of having gotten to do that. Over the next few years, we ended up working with a lot of different companies in a lot of different arenas. It was very exciting. One of the projects that I did, for those who know Wegmans, the big grocery store chain in the Northeast, I got to represent Dell, Microsoft, and Veritas, which is a major backup vendor, with them for the largest server migration that Dell had ever done. I got to do the proof of concept, I got to do the pilot, and I got to oversee the main rollout. It was a massive project that took more than a year and a quarter and took me across a great number of states in the northern uh, U.S. I got to explore geographically. I got to explore professionally. I got to build a lot of my resume. At the same time, I was running a K-12 schools IT in Western New York, which was also a really cool experience because it was a very small school and I got to do a huge range of things, everything from teaching classes to overseeing curriculum development within the tech space, uh, doing continuing education classes after hours, building their labs, building their networks, putting in their phones, putting in their servers because they had nothing when we started. So this was back when we were going into a green field. At that time, there were still schools that had nothing. Thing. They may have had a computer here or there, but they didn't have networks and of internet. We went and got the internet donated by what is now Spectrum or, or uh, Comcast. I'm not even not sure who it is. Spectrum must be uh, in the United States. They donated internet because we were donating the IT and we got to do so much amazing work. And from there, I got the call that they wanted me to do an interview on Wall Street. I ended up uh, going on Wall Street, did the interview really as a favor for some consulting firms. Of course, I've done tons of work that we're not talking about. There was a time period that I was working um, as head of IT for a newspaper uh, in Washington, D.C. There was a time period where I was uh, head of IT for a little while for IBM's uh, drill sector, which is a very large uh, sector, the world's largest drill shop for IBM. We got to these amazing things. We're building up this really big resume. And uh, I got the call that someone wanted to see me on Wall Street. And so as a favor, because I had no intention of moving to Manhattan, went down and interviewed on Wall Street. And on the drive home, I said, I was talking to my aunt on the phone and I'm like, you know, it's really too bad. They'll never pay to relocate me down to, to New York City because that was a great interview. I really like those people. And while I was talking to her, my phone rang and they're like, can you turn around and come back? Like they're serious. They want to, they want to hire you right now. And uh, so I ended up talking to my wife and we, we took some time and really thought about it and, uh, and decided to give it a try. So we ended up moving to uh, Northern Jersey, living there so I could work on Wall Street. And I put in nearly a decade working on Wall Street um, in a really amazing position. I got to work in early algorithmic trading. I got to work in early low latency trading. I got to do, I was the, brought in as the Linux technology chief. So I was the senior most escalation point for all of technology related to Linux uh, for the world's largest bank at the time. I got to go through the banking crisis from the inside. I got to see banks rise and fall. I got to work as the senior most technology uh, professional on uh, trading of the U.S. dollar. I was the key holder to the trading floors and was able to cut off the U.S. dollar should I need to, should there be a compromise to the system. I was the one technologist who had the ability to do that. Um, I got to work on building the very first cloud architecture for financial trading on Wall Street. So I had a really, really fun, amazing run. I got to have an office in Manhattan. I had a, an office in London and an office in Belfast. And I I didn't get to go to them very often, but I did get to go to them. Um, and one of my uh, kind of personal claims to fame is that they gave me the office in White Star House in Belfast. That is the, I had the office with the window over, overlooking the dry dock from the desk where they designed the Titanic. I also have uh, a bit of a claim to fame in doing two doctoral theses uh, for my, my uh, graduate work that I had been pushed to write uh, project management of the Titanic papers. There's a long story behind that that I will tell sometime, and no, I do not have a doctorate, but I did earn one. Uh, and <laughs> uh, those papers um, are now very well known uh, separately. They're many years apart from each other. Uh, so I have this really big academic background that I have no interest in the Titanic whatsoever, but I had this really strong academic background in it and, um, and ended up having the office at White Star House, uh, which was incredibly interesting. Uh, so I um, was on Wall Street for a long time. We decided we wanted to move to Europe. Uh, my, my job thought they were going to let us do that. When it didn't, we ended 
ended up switching jobs. We, my family, uh, moved back to New York. We had bounced around during that time uh, and had moved to Texas, then temporarily moved back to New York. I took a job on hedge fund row, worked in the hedge fund world in sovereign trading, which is where you represent countries instead of companies and individual traders. Uh, very interesting time there. Not my favorite, but it was at least very interesting and educational. Left there to go work in Europe as a uh, essentially a nonprofit technologist. Uh, from there went on to um, industry research and writing primarily. Uh, and all this time I was doing so through my own company. That company never went away. Uh, and we were always uh, growing and, and getting new clients and, and doing interesting technology on a smaller scale there while I was out representing us on the, the big scale clients. Um, so that is my, my basic career is that I have spent the majority of my career while I've bounced around through a lot of different fields and have experience in a lot of areas. And that explains a lot of things, right? I've worked from many different aspects in journalism, in publishing, in healthcare, in veterinary, in uh, um, um, photography and the arts and in music and in music production. And there's all kinds of things I'm leaving out. I'm, I'm giving you the, the fastest little resume here. And during these times, I, I bounced around all over the country. We lived in Texas, we lived in Virginia, we lived in Maryland, we lived in different parts of New York. Um, I went to university in Michigan. Uh, and so there's a lot of, uh, it's been an adventure, right? And I've, I focus very heavily on my life being an adventure because I think that it, that's what makes it fun, right? It's constantly taking on the next challenge, doing the next big thing, um, and always pushing a little bit harder. And it's one of the reasons why I do this vlog is because um, I one, I think there's a lot of interesting things to share because I've done things that are a bit different than a lot of people, but also uh, I'm always looking for a way to do and push myself more, to do more and push myself harder. And I think doing this vlog really pushes me to um, be more intentional with so many things that I do uh, and, th and and put them into words and to record them uh, and, and give kind of a, a, a running dialogue um, to a life that I think has been very adventurous. And there's a lot of time that I wasn't doing this and I wish that I had, especially for my employees now who, um, some of them work for a company that has been around longer than they've been alive. And I think that there is a heritage almost that comes with that. We've been in a very exciting place. I um, mean, I'm very proud of the work that we've done for the, the clients that we've helped and the kind of stuff that we do. So the majority of my career, if you were to actually look at it from what is my primary career is I am a technology and business consultant and have been since I was 19 years old. Um, from that time, I've been a serious one since I was about 22. Um, and I and I started even earlier, but not as a consultant, just, just working in the field. Uh, with 25 years of my own company and um, doing a company that I started, I'm the founder, and um, you know, working with businesses of all types. And we consult in everything from marketing to staffing to uh, outsourcing. And we don't do legal, we don't do accounting, we don't do those things, but technology and very high level stuff. I've helped startups, I've helped the Fortune 10, I've worked with lots of veterinary, I've worked with a lot of human medical, I've worked with a lot of manufacturing, a lot of different kinds of companies across a lot of different spaces. And um, that constant, Moving between industries and moving between businesses gives so much exposure and so many different insights. And I think that that's just amazing. It's been so much fun because I'm not tied into doing the same thing every day. Every time my phone rings, it's potentially a challenge from a customer who's looking to do something that no one else has done, or they're doing something where the, the teams that they've had have gotten stuck and they need to do something that they're unable to do, or they're feeling risky at doing without my team there to help them. And so we get to work in so many different technology arenas and so many different business arenas. That's been just an amazing journey. Um, so when people ask, what do I do? I work and I work really hard. I work a lot of long hours. And I think it's funny. I say I think a lot. I think I think quite a bit. Uh, when half the people who know me talk to me, they're like, when do you sleep? You work all the time. I'm in meetings at 6.30 most mornings. 7 o'clock is kind of the latest. I'm in a meeting for hours every morning. I have meetings all throughout the day. People who are here physically with me know that my phone is ringing. I'm constantly being pulled into meetings. I'm very, very busy. And it's amazing that I get any time to do anything personally. For you guys watching the vlog, you tend to have the opposite reaction. Oh, doesn't he have like loads of free time and he never has to do work or anything? And I think that's the impression that people get. I'm actually working 80 to 100 hours per week every week. I don't take vacations, not really. Once in a great while I will, but that's the rarity. Um, I work in many different arenas within the company, within other companies, because uh, we provide different roles to different companies. So I am a consulting CIO to a number of companies. I am top level escalation on security for a number of companies. Um, and my team 
comes to me. I'm the escalation for my own teams because I've been doing this for so long. So I work in all kinds of things from creative control and marketing and sales and software design. This has been a big thing that we do software design. We design software for the veterinary industry. We still design software for human medical. We design software for the entertainment industry. Um, we uh, do software for things like uh, uh, lottos and gambling systems. We do things for governments. We work across an incredible number of, of arenas. And when you see me traveling, in most cases, I'm traveling for work and doing my best to bring you guys travel and relocation information and my insights and my, and my daily life as part of that. But I'm often there for the purpose of work because I, I do get to travel for work a bit. So that's fantastic and I love that. But it also means I don't have a lot of spare time. So I kind of have to combine those two to make it make sense a lot of the time. And my team is spread out all over Latin America. And so I do get to travel around Latin America and see my team uh, a lot of times as well. And that's pretty awesome and I really do appreciate that. But so my day-to-day -day life is I'm actually on the phone with clients much of the day. I'm actually designing software much of the day. I'm working on IT, I'm talking to my team, I'm teaching, I'm consulting internally, I'm teaching and consulting externally, um, I'm running interviews, all kinds of things. Like my days are very varied, but they are consistently very busy. Getting a day where I can sit down and just edit videos or do something that's just fun, I do like my job, so that is fun, but doing things that are purely just for me is the rarity, even weekends. I typically work seven days a week. I do work very hard at trying to take time off and spend time with my kids, so I try every evening uh, to make sure I set aside time for them. We homeschool, so uh, they're, they have very flexible schedules, so we're able to do more together in that way, but that I hope gives you a small piece of who I am. Um, I come from a Swiss, Dutch, Scottish background. Uh, my family is colonial, but not British colonial. My Swiss family came during the colonies after they were well established. My Dutch family came on the very first boat to the Dutch colony, which was later conquered by the British. They were not uh, not part of the British colonies when they came and they were then stuck uh, in the British col colonies once they were there. So I do have a colonial experience, but it's very different than the one that people imagine many colonials have. Most colonials in the United States, especially from the East Coast at least, uh, are British colonials and they come as part of the, the uh, Plymouth plant plantation and, and uh, Virginia and, and those regions, and they, they kind of grew up from there and they have typically a common narrative, but mine is very different. Uh, but that is my background. I'm completely European. Uh, I do not have any direct ties. People are always like, can you move back to Switzerland? Like, no, they really don't honor that to people who moved over during the colonial period. Um, I wish they did. There has been times that I've looked at moving back to Switzerland and it's very onerous. Uh, but we have always wanted to move abroad. And then the story of us traveling is a separate one. Uh, but my wife and I have always traveled together. Uh, we got married in 2003. Uh, we um, started traveling internationally in 2007 prior to, well, and that doesn't include Canada. We, we always considered can Canada to be domestic, but the U.S. and Canada, we always traveled back when we were dating, once we were first married for our honeymoon. Uh, but then in 2007, we started going to Europe, and then we started traveling with our kids once we had them heavily uh, and, and put in a lot of time in Europe. And, and then started uh, with Latin America and Africa and, and going abroad and, and Asia now. And... Uh, so traveling and wanting to live abroad has always been something that we were interested in. Um, we did, my wife and I did a travel uh, podcast starting around 2005. That was something that we found very exciting. So that has led a lot into this. So a lot of the things throughout my life, whether it's restaurants, hotels, travel, writing, uh, technology, uh, creative publication, photography, all those things, they've always been there in the background and putting those together, this vlog and the content that we do, feels kind of like a natural extension of what my life has been. And it, it just makes me happy to be able to take those things, put them together and uh, provide a, a lot of business background, a lot of consulting and technology background, a lot of travel background, and put that together. Uh, for you guys, um, I think it provides unique perspective um, and uh, it's something that I very much enjoy. So it's been meaningful for me. Um, but to the people who are like, do you really work? Yeah, I work a lot. And am I running off of trust funds? No, anything but. Uh, certainly, I've been lucky that I have uh, parents who were able to step in and help me when you know times were really, really tough and we were struggling to put food on the table and we didn't know how we were going to be able to afford to keep on. They, I, you know, were not so poor that I was not able to get help. But that I was running off of a trust fund or anything of the sort is uh, pretty far from reality. So uh, that is who I am. I hope that that was interesting. I don't know why it would be, but I get with 7,500 people wondering 
who this guy is, what his background is, why this is where he ended up. There's a lot of why we ended up in Nicaragua separate from who I am as a person, but I think it gives a bit of insight into, boy, I really do say that a lot, don't I? Into um, what drove us to have the freedoms that we do and, and why I have uh, a lot of the insights that I have. Um, and I And a lot of people definitely question where I get the experience in a lot of things. And I've worked so many jobs, so many different things, and at such a level that I really do have experience with a lot of stuff that, that most people don't get to touch um, because I've worked in so many different arenas. And, and that provides a unique set of experiences that uh, I hope you guys find valuable. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe if you'd like to help support what we do here. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, if you could share on social media, tell a friend or someone about the show, especially now as we've lost a number of viewers over the last day, uh, that would be much appreciated. And of course, you know, we try to bring Nicaragua content, but we're doing other things as well, uh, travel and relocation. And as always, ask those questions, get down there, send in videos of your questions as well. And I will see all of you tomorrow. And I've been getting a little bit better about this. There should be four videos popping up on the screen. If you click on one, that would be most excellent. It tells the algorithm that this was a good show and that there should be more of them. And uh, trust me, we notice. <laughs>